start with some information that I was reading this morning of all places in bed, thinking about uh, what I was going to say today, and I saw an article that was published uh, yesterday, I think it was. It says that outside of the two COVID years, the Philippines has had an annual growth rate of between 6 and 7 per cent every year since 2010. It also said that communications, technology and transportation were the key factors to Philippine growth. And the conclusion in the article was that the Philippines is set to stun the world in the next 20 years. And I totally agree with that. I agree with it because I'm a blockchain guy. My history with blockchain goes back to 2007, 2008. And that was before blockchain was launched. The key date for launching was the Bitcoin blockchain, which launched in January, 9th of January, 2009. I had the privilege and the opportunity to work with those who were involved in the design and creation of that first blockchain. And that's a very important factor in my life, and I'll come back to that. I want to talk about Enchain, because Enchain is a sponsor. It's been mentioned a couple of times. Enchain is a very, very important company and business in the global blockchain space. I was a co-founder in 2015, and since then we've built an organisation of between 300 and 500 people, whether you're looking at internal or connected um, personnel. Enchain has been voted two years in a row, the last two years, as one of the top 100 innovative companies in the world. That's innovative companies, not blockchain and not crypto. That's innovative companies in the world. We have over 3,000 patents that have been filed. Six or 700 of those have been awarded or granted, and they're all in the blockchain space. We've been developing blockchain intellectual property since 2010. Now I want to go back to my history again. And I've talked about this a number of times in presentations. I had the opportunity in 2009 to be actively involved in the launch of the blockchain sector. And I chose not to. I chose not to because I made a mistake in thinking that blockchain or the technology was all about crypto. It was all about payments. It was all about the digital currency. What I overlooked was the profound and critical importance of blockchain technology. I had the opportunity to correct that by being involved in the founding of Enchain. I also had the opportunity to represent Enchain at a key event here in this country in October last year in the province of Bataan. That key event led to us building a critical relationship with Governor and Congressman Garcia in the province of Bataan to deliver initiatives for that province and to deliver initiatives for this country. Initiatives for this country that are built on the mandate that President Marcos announced just a couple of weeks prior to that conference in Bataan. And that mandate was to digitise government records and to improve, improve the efficiency of government transactions in this country by using blockchain technology. I had the honour and again the privilege of spending two and a half hours 
with the President when I was here on my last trip. And we talked about the initiatives that would see the realisation of his vision and his dream for this country. I have a very special connection with the Philippines. I first came here in 1997. I had a number of business dealings between 2000 and uh, 2008, 2009. I've been living in this country as a permanent resident for 14 years. I'm married to a Filipina. We have children. And I coincidentally live in Bataan. So I have a, a deep, long history of involvement with the Philippines and the fact that personally and through my companies we have the opportunity to deliver something very special here is very special to me. I want to talk very briefly about the difference between blockchain and crypto. I have very little tolerance for discussions about crypto. I have a deep passion for the technology of blockchain. Crypto, crypto is one of those things where the world has seen the best and the worst, and I'd suggest a lot more worse than best when it comes to the schemes, the, um, the deceit, the lies, the cheating, and everything else. And that's not what I want to see delivered in this country. I want to see blockchain technology delivered at the grassroots. Bataan is the start. I'm going to be there tomorrow morning again. And we've got a program of work which is aimed to be delivered in the first quarter of next year. And that, uh, that platform will be engaging all of the residents and constituents in Bataan and their government using a blockchain. Just as a side note to that, we're doing work here with the SEC, with the Central Bank, with DICT and a number of other government agencies and departments, all related to blockchain, all related to blockchain education, all related to blockchain design. The use cases generally and the use cases for the Philippines are infinite. One of the topics that I was asked to talk about is education. Well, we're going to be launching through an official event our blockchain incubator program on the 8th of August, we think. The date is the 8th of August. And that is to complete a promise that I made to the Garcia brothers in Bataan and also to the President about contributing to this country to develop blockchain technology within the Philippines, for the Philippines, and hopefully for export to the world. We also have committed on the educational front to develop and work cooperatively with Ateneo University to deliver blockchain courses to third and fourth year students. And that program is currently uh, in the implementation phase and will be launched, will be available to students in the second half of this year. Web3. All this ties together and leads us back to the topic of Web3. What is Web3? Well, Web3 is all about identity your identity, my identity. Who owns your identity? Of course you do. In the current world of Web2, you don't. But in the Web3 world, using the technology of blockchain, 
you will own your identity, you will have the right to say who is able to see your identity or use your identity and what parts of your identity. And that leads to data, data about you, all sorts of data about you. You own that data, you should own that data. And blockchain enables you to control and manage access to that data. And all this will be done through micro and nano payments, fractions of a penny, fractions of a peso. You know when Bitcoin was launched in 2009, it was designed for peer-to-peer -peer transactions directly and integrated into the design was a technology called IPv6. I found out yesterday that all government infrastructure in this country, 70% of it is already IPv6 enabled. They're running dual stacks, IPv4, IPv6, but it surprised me that IPv6 had had such a significant uh, inroad into government infrastructure. That means we are just a step away from being able to turn this country into something extraordinary using blockchain technology and peer-to-peer -peer transactions. And I was allocated 15 minutes, so I'm going to stay to my time slot. Final thing I want to talk about is social impact. Everything we do in blockchain, using blockchain technology and services, we are building and delivering and rolling out the largest social impact movement the world has ever seen. And we shouldn't lose sight of that. Every one of you in this room are part of that movement. And over the next two, three, four, five years, you'll become more central and more of a part of this massive social impact movement. So thank you, enjoy being part of it, and enjoy the rest of the day. Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stablecoins, metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Bitcoin 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.